How do and welcome back to Morrigan's Creations and in today's video we're going to be working on the Hunters of Huan Chi specifically we're going to be working on these terror wings so the color scheme that we are working with today is based on the rose-breasted grosbeak which is obviously a bird characterized by its red plumage on its chest which I think is something that would look really nice on these models. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you are probably going to notice in this video is this scenic base. I made this off camera, and if you want to see how I made this kind of thing, let me know in the comments. As you've seen, we've begun our paint scheme with an all over coat of Lauren Forest which I've thinned down with a bit of thinner and flow improver and applied with an airbrush. Cabalite green was then sprayed into all of the darker areas of the base. I did this second as it's easier to cover lighter colours with darker. Now I wasn't too keen on the desaturated look of the base, so I applied some moot green to all areas that I wanted to be in direct sunlight. And it's easy to see how much life that colour has added. The terror wings themselves were given a coat of Black Legion contrast paint. I applied this with an airbrush for a smoother coat, but you could do this with a regular brush. However, on the flat surfaces like the wings you make encounter splotchiness. Because of the thinness of the contrast paints, I was working at around 25 PSI. I continued this with the white ink that was applied to the chest area of the terror wings. This provides me with not only a good base coat, but it also preps the chest for the next step. To create the iconic red chest, I sprayed a small area with some whole red from AK Interactive. I thought it would be beneficial to see exactly how my colour scheme would look before dedicating the hours of brushwork to the model. Once I was happy, the real fun could begin. I begin to highlight the upper facing areas of skin using Skaven Blight Dinge while still ensuring to leave some Black Legion visible in the recesses. While doing this, I tried to leave the edges a little less uniform, which is going to help with blending, which was done by using a glaze of the same colour. I tried my best to make the wing membranes as smooth as I could to help show the softness of the skin. For the beaks, I made a 50-50 mix of sand yellow and whole red, and I applied this in a nice thick coat. To create the highlights, I simply added a bit more sand yellow to the mix with each layer. I want this to look a little like bone and make the head the focal point. For our higher highlights, I mix sand yellow and ultron grey, but you could just use ushabti bone here. And I finished the highlights with a bit of screaming skull. This process was repeated once again on the lower jaw, but I also applied the whole red mix to the scales surrounding the head and on the chest. Wordbearer's red was used to highlight the scales, head membranes and chest of each model. A further highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet was then added before a final extreme highlight of Deep Red. I chose Deep Red specifically for its intense colour. The tongs of each model were painted simply using a 50-50 mix of Gene Stealer Purple and Emperor's Children. The highlight was achieved by mixing a very small amount of Screaming Skull into the mix. I opted to use some true metallics for the anklets and bands that adorn the terror wings. For this I used a base layer of Hashut Copper, which seems to work well best over a black base. I'm going to admit that the white areas of the model were what I was dreading the most, due to them having a high contrast with the black. However I did make sure not to go too bright with various mixes of Skaven Blight Dinge and Ulthron Grey. After all, these parts are in shadow. 
To help tie everything together and also replicate our reference, I opted to freehand some markings on the wing membranes. For this I used the same mix as I did for the white skin, but this time I thinned it significantly allowing the base layers to remain visible. It is a small detail but I think it takes the model further. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now it's no secret that these videos do take time to make, especially whilst also working a regular job. You can all help me out by liking, commenting and subscribing, which is going to tell the algorithm to push my content further across this platform. I don't like to push it too much, but I also have a Patreon where I post pictures showing you what I'm working on. The link to which is on screen and in the description. I felt that I hadn't actually pushed the metallics far enough so I decided to brighten some areas with Gehenna's gold, which I feel brings a little bit more warmth back into the model. I then went ahead and added a gloss varnish to all the eyes of all the terror wings to help bring life into the paint job. Hang with me now, we are almost there. The last thing to do is to paint the sculpted scenery on all of the models. In the case of the stump the terror bird is standing on, I used various mixes of Cabalite Green, Gawthor Brown and Thondia Brown. This was applied somewhat randomly to the stump, but also trying to remember realistic light placement. Trying to apply our brightest colours on our upward most facing areas of the stump. If you're following along, take care not to go too bright here as we don't want to distract the eye away from the terror wing. I just want to say that this took about 5 minutes to do and I'm really happy with how it looks. After painting the ruins with various shades of grey I painted some of the smaller details and that left me with this. 